when we talk about nerves upper limb nerves are more commonly asked than the lower limb nerves and when we look at which is the most common nerve asked radial nerve radial nerve is also the most commonly damaged nerve and it is also the nerve with the best prognosis usually it goes like this common things have a better prognosis when i look at uh, my anatomy lectures i would see these images of distribution of sensations along upper limb and lower limb i will mug it up for hours but at the end of the day i won't remember it so is there a way that we can remember the major sensory distributions of three nerves of upper limb yes and the way to remember is this this is like a horn also called as horn sign now anybody who can do that it means that his all the three nerves are intact the radial nerve the ulnar nerve and the median nerve when i look at sensations of upper limb the tip of little finger is supplied by ulnar nerve it is an autonomous zone exclusively supplied the tip of index finger is supplied by the median nerve and the dorsum of the first web space is radial nerve so this is ulnar median radial so these are the three nerves that we must remember also remember radial is the commonest damage nerve and has the best prognosis this image doesn't belong to people like me i will remember this sensory distribution majority of my questions will be answered classification sedens classified nerve injuries into three types sedens neuropraxia it's a physiological block in the nerve conduction there is no anatomical damage there is 100% recovery what is more important to remember supposedly i have a radial nerve palsy i will have a wrist drop if it is neuropraxia it will get correct on its own tuck so there is no gradual improvement it is like a moment like love strikes in a moment in a flash similarly neuropraxia occurs in a flash it comes back like a lightning and lightning will strike at one go exonaut meses is a damage to the exon sheath it recovers from proximal to distal example radial nerve palsy loss of elbow extension wrist extension finger extension when it will recover first the elbow then the wrist then the finger this is proximal to distal also called as motor march what does not recover is neurot meses but you will mention in all these there is a mention of tunnel sign let's understand what is tunnel sign when we talk about comparison of sedens to sunderland classification sedens neuropraxia 
ए सनलैंड टाइप वन इंजरी सेडेंस एक्जोनॉट मेसेस ए सनलैंड टाइप टू थ्री एंड फोर एंड सेडेंस न्यूरोट मेसेस ए सनलैंड टाइप फाइव सो व्हेन आई कंपेयर देम यू नो द रिलेशनशिप इज लाइक दिस सेडेंस इज अ स्मॉल वर्ड it has three stages sunderland is a bigger word it has five stages although sunderland type 4 is classified by two with two and three but prognosis wise behaves as type 5 so four behaves as type 5 one is like neuropraxia 100% recovery in one go फाइव इज क्लासिकल न्यूनॉट मेसेस फोर क्लासिफाइड विद एक्सोनॉट मेसेस बट बिहेव लाइक न्यूनॉट मेसेस ऑल्सो रिमेंबर इट इज अकॉर्डिंग टू द शीट्स फ्रॉम इन साइड टू द आउट एंड द शीट्स ऑफ द नर्व इज एंडोन्यूरियम पेरीन्यूरियम एपीन्यूरियम so e is inside endo and ap is the most peripheral so in nerve injuries remember same alphabets don't come together neuropraxia then axonot meses then neurot meses so it is n then a then n people sometimes reverse it similarly it's endo peri then ap two e doesn't come together because people get confused ap is above peri or peri is above ap so don't confuse that now i told you we will talk about tunnel sign tunnel sign is based on law of projection tunnel sign tells you about the recovery so what is law of projection law of projection says if you stimulate a nerve you can't stimulate a nerve when you touch you touch a receptor so law of projection says if you stimulate a nerve you can only stimulate a nerve when it's damaged you can't stimulate a physiological damage nerve so neuropraxia is not a part of this discussion so you will stimulate an anatomically damaged nerve an anatomically damaged nerve where there's a damage to the myelin sheath that can be stimulated so law of projection says when you stimulate a demyelinated anatomically damaged nerve anywhere along the path the brain will perceive that the stimulus is coming from the area of the receptor even if the receptor is not in the body I'll give you an example if you look at uh, the tip of index finger this this is supplied by the median nerve so if i look at my median nerve supply that's how it travels imagine the median nerve got damaged in this area anatomical damage there are free nerve endings so when i tap on the course of the nerve from distal to proximal the moment i strike the free nerve ending it will be stimulated stimulated nerve stimulated will stimulate the brain center for the median nerve and the brain will project that the stimulus is coming from the receptor you are hitting at the free nerve ending 
the law of relation says if you stimulate enough the stimulus brain will perceive is from the receptor which is the tip of index finger so you will feel the abnormal sensation of tingling here tinnal tingling you will label it as positive you will ask the patient to go back home he will come back after an interval of 3 weeks when he comes back you will repeat the test again there can be two scenarios scenario number 1 the nerve did not recover neurotmesis so when you go from distal to proximal you will again strike at the same point tingling again at the tip of index finger you will say it's positive at the same point called as positive but static in other words if the nerve recovers it will recover from proximal to distal when you strike again now there is a new point because the myelin would have covered the recovered nerve so the tip is demyelinated now you have a positive point you strike here brain stimulated tingling felt here is distal now you know the distance between the two points that is the distance divided by time distance upon time is equal to speed this will tell you the speed of nerve regeneration which is 1 millimeter per day as satisfactory or you can label it as 1 inch per month an inch is 2.54 cm or 25.4 mm almost roughly 1 mm per day in a month of 30 days so good rate of recovery is 1 mm per day when i look at tunnel sign in neuropraxia since it's a physiological block it's not applicable or negative in neurotmesis it is positive but static in axonotmesis positive and progressive so if they ask you tunnel sign is positive in two answers are correct axonotmesis and neurotmesis but if you have to choose one answer in an exam where single best answer is there you will take it as progressive being really positive means axonotmesis let's talk about nerves let's go to the first nerve the axillary nerve axilla axillary nerve it takes a turn at the proximal part of the humerus and supplies this area army people they apply a badge here the regimental badge this area is supplied by axillary nerve if there is a damage to the axillary nerve you will have loss of sensation at this area axillary nerve supplies two muscles deltoid and teres minor remember that these two muscles and the sensation axillary nerve can be damaged in three types of injuries number 1 shoulder dislocation anterior posterior inferior anything axillary nerve number 2 fractures of the proximal part of the humerus and number 3 intramuscular injection into deltoids this is the regimental badge area regimental badge sign when i look at the lumbricals one of the muscles which the examiners love we have four lumbricals in each hand the lateral two are supplied by the median nerve the medial two are supplied by the ulnar nerve lumbricals they make a l in your hand so they will make a l this action is of lumbricals flexion of mcp extension of 
इंटर फेलेंजियल ज्वाइंट दिस इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज इंट्रेंसिक प्लस पोजिशन यू रिमेंबर कपिल शर्मा ही मेड अ शो कॉमेडी नाइट विद कपिल एंड ही सेट दिस टुक दिस साइन टुक वेरी फेमस आई शुड नॉट बी स्पीकिंग इट हेयर इज एक्शन ऑफ लम्बरिकल्स एवरी डॉक्टर फॉर गेट्स इट यू मस्ट नॉट लम्बरिकल्स इफ दे आर पैरालाइज अपोजिट विल अकर लुक हेयर हाइपर एक्सटेंशन ऑफ एम सी बी फ्लेक्शन ऑफ इंटरफेलेंजल ज्वाइंट दिस इज कॉल्ड एज क्लॉ हैंड क्लॉइंग लम्बरिकल्स क्लॉइंग वेन यू अप्लाई अ स्प्लिंट एंड रेप्लीकेट द एल यू आर बेंडिंग द नकल्स दिस इज कॉल्ड एज नकल बेंडर स्प्लिंट मीडियम नव अल्ला नव पैरालाइज एक्शन गॉन क्लॉ हैंड करेक्शन नकल बेंडर स्प्लिंट सो दे हैड शोन इन वन ऑफ द एग्जाम्स फर्स्ट लम्बरिकल मार्क्ड इन अडवरिक स्पेसिम एंड दे आज यू विच नर्व सप्लाइज इट आंसर मीडियम नर्व वेन आई लुक एट द इंटरशिया इन माई हैंड्स आई हैव पामर इंटरशिया फोर ऑफ दैम डॉर्सल इंटरशिया फोर ऑफ दैम पामर एडक्ट सो पामर इंटरशिया एडक्ट एडक्शन टू वर्ड द मिडल फिंगर डॉर्सल एबडक्ट डॉर्सल इंटरशिया एबडक्ट एंड फ्रेंड्स the middle finger the middle finger does not have palmar intrusion that is why its movement to either side is called as a b duction so pad palmar intrusion dorsal intrusion all the intrusion is friends are supplied by ulnar nerve remember that all intrusion ulnar nerve let's talk about ulnar nerve ulnar nerve will supply the palmar intrusia so if you give a card to the patient and ask him to hold it between the fingers just like this photograph here this is card test the examiner also will try to pull it out and if your palmar intrusia is strong he will not be able to do that so card test palmar intrusia ulnar nerve similarly if you ask a patient to place his hand on the table and move the middle finger to either side if he is not able to do that this is igawa test igawa with i not e dorsal intrusia friends when we look at uh, the thumb you know our thumb it is thena remnants which supplies the muscles among the thena remnants one of the muscle is adductor pollicis supplied by ulnar nerve adductor pollicis adducts the thumb the movements of the thumb if i get my thumb into the plane of palm it's flexion when i get them away it's extension when the thumb is by the palm it's a reduction when the thumb is right angle to the plane of palm it's abduction when it touches all the fingers it's opposition when it rotates in all the planes it's circumduction so adductor pollicis supplied by ulnar nerve if i give a book to a patient ask him to hold it between the thumbs if he is able to hold it it means adductor pollicis is functioning well and if it's paralyzed nobody will let the book go so the patient will flex the thumb and hold the book so when you are able to hold the book it's book test adductor pollicis ulnar nerve and when you have to flex the thumb to hold the book this movement then the long flexor of the thumb flexor pollicis longus is substituting for adductor pollicis this is froment sign friends froment sign many people confuse for median nerve but friends froment sign is for ulnar nerve 
I will tell you a mnemonic. You may laugh over it. But the mnemonic is FU. What is FU? Don't laugh. Keep your mind pure. FU means follow up. Follow up means ask the patient to come back to you. Please don't think anything else. I am a teacher. I am supposed to tell you good things. So mnemonic is FU. You can pause the video, smile and start again. So from and sign, Anna now. Flexor pollicis longus is supplied by anterior interosseous nerve, a branch of median nerve. We will come back to it shortly. And when Dalna nerve is paralyzed, your little finger stays abducted. This is Wartenberg sign. So, card test, book test, from and sign, Wartenberg test. Igawa test. These are five tests you should remember for Alana. But if you want to remember one, from and sign. Alana will cause the Alana claw hand. The median nerve can involve the median fingers. And all the nerves involve cause the total claw hand, means Alana and median. When I look at the Alana claw hand, I want to talk about the Alana paradox. What exactly is Ulnar paradox. Ulnar paradox means that the amount of clawing is dependent upon where the ulnar nerve got injured. You can have an ulnar nerve injury right around the elbow, behind the medial epicondyle, the ulnar nerve goes. Or you can have an ulnar nerve injury right around the wrist. So around the wrist, around the elbow, anywhere. Around the elbow, it's called as high ulnar nerve palsy. Around the wrist, low ulnar nerve palsy. Now, when you have ulnar nerve injury around the wrist or around the elbow, the difference is around the elbow, the medial half of flexor digitorum profundus, the long flexors of the fingers, is supplied by the ulnar nerve. When the injury occurs around the wrist, because FDP has been supplied around the elbow, it is spared. Let us understand the difference. Imagine you have an ulnar nerve palsy. Lumbricals are gone. You have clawing. Now, if the injury is around the wrist, you know the long flexors of these two fingers, FDP medial half, it will contract and cause more clawing. So, ulnar nerve injury around wrist will have clawing, proper clawing. That is, the injury occurs around the elbow, the FDP is also paralyzed. So, the clawing will be less. Surprising, no? When the injury is more proximal, you should have more damage. Example, brain injury to finger injury. Brain injury will have more damage. But in ulnar nerve injuries, around the elbow, Although, damage is more, but the clawing evident is less. So, elbow injury, high ulnar nerve injury, less clawing. Wrist injury, low ulnar nerve injury, more clawing. So, ulnar paradox. Injuries around elbow have low clawing. Or high ulnar nerve injury has low clawing, less clawing. So, this is you should remember. Coming to the median nerve. You know the median nerve helps you make the fist. When you make a fist, what all are you using? FDS of all the four fingers, FDP of all the four fingers. FDS of all the four fingers is supplied by the median nerve. FDP of the lateral two fingers is supplied by anterior interosseous nerve. The medial two fingers is supplied by the ulnar nerve. Anterior interosseous nerve is a branch of median nerve and ulnar nerve for the medial two. Making a fist, FDS and FDP. Imagine your median nerve is paralyzed. 
So the flexors of these two fingers are gone. So when you make a fist, they will stand out. But these two, the ring and the little finger will flex because of FTP intact. You know, when you make a fist and you have a median of palsy, these two fingers stand out, it's called as the pointing index. The word is very simple, pointing. But it should be like this because these two are not being flexed, but it instead is half flexed, half flexed middle finger. Why? Because the tendon sheath of the ring finger and the tendon sheath of the middle finger, they are common. Whereas in humans, the index finger has separated out to work with the thumb. So, friends, let's do it slowly. As if Shah Rukh Khan is running to meet Kajol. Slowly. Flex these two fingers. All of you do it with me. When you do that, this moves. You can't keep it straight. Do it again. And you know, when this moves, how much will it move? Will depend upon how much connection we have to each other. We move for a person depending on connection. In some people it will move too much, some less. But there will be some movement. Can't stay. So the middle finger and the ring finger, common tendon sheet, that is why in pointing index, the index finger is straight. Because in humans, we have separated tendons of index finger. Whereas, the middle finger is partially flexed. That's how you should remember. When a Pope talks to a big community, that's how he speaks. This is called as benediction attitude. Or, when you hold your palms like this and you make a clasp, you are making a fist in both the palms. This is the same as pointing index. If your median nerve is paralyzed, these two fingers will stand out. This is called as the Oshner clasp test. Pointing index, benediction attitude, Oshner clasp test, they all mean the same. Inability to flex these two fingers. When you give a pen to a patient, ask him to touch it with the thumb. This is abductor pollicis brevis. Median nerve supplies it, called as pen test. If your median nerve is paralyzed, you will not be able to touch the pen. And then, friends, the opposition is a gift of median nerve to human beings. Thumb opposes. That's why we are specialized. Monkeys, they can't do this. That is why their thumb is in the same plane as palm. This is called as ape thumb deformity median nerve. How will you remember it? People remember ape thumb deformity with respect to radial nerve. Remember my name, Apoor Vimara, AM. So, ape thumb median nerve. Bandro jaise kaam karata so, ape, median nerve. Don't write this down. Just remember. Ape, monkeys, thumb, median nerve. AM. So, two things to remember. Allah nerve, remember FU. Median nerve, remember AM. And then we know that the anterior interosseous nerve is a branch of median nerve. It supplies three muscles. Whatever has got three things is an MCQ. It supplies flexor pollicis longus of thumb, FDP lateral half and pronator quadratus. So, this sign called as OK sign, also called as Kilo Nevin sign, will only be possible in a patient if his anterior interosseous nerve is intact. Ulnar and median of palsies, they cause claw hand and correcting them produces the knuckle bender splint. So, friends, if you have claw hand and to correct that, you have a knuckle bender splint. And since ulnar nerve is more common than the median nerve injuries, if they give you both the options for which do you use knuckle bender splint, ulnar nerve is a better answer. So, this was about ulnar and median nerve.